Former Vice President, now 2020 presidential candidate Joe Biden's first 2020 presidential campaign rally coming on the heels of President Trump's weekend MAGA rally in Wisconsin with both candidates after the same Rust Belt supporters. Let's break it down with Fox News senior political analyst Britt Hume. Great to have you with us, Britt. Thank you, Shannon. Glad to be here. Okay, one of the interesting comments that we saw at that rally today was the union leader saying essentially they feel much more of an affinity or connection uh, or respect from Joe Biden than they do, he said, their last Democratic nominee. Uh, we know that Hillary Clinton lost a lot of these people to President Trump. Now both of these uh, top contenders, at least top in the polling, uh, with Biden being atop the Democrat field and the president as the incumbent, they're both going to go after the same group. How does that work out? Well, it's a peculiar situation, Shannon. I mean, obviously, Biden has some ties to the state of Pennsylvania where this rally was held. He was born in the state. Um, he was getting, he got today the endorsement of the firefighters union. And, you know, that's always, a, you know, I guess, for, in his case, a welcome thing. Um, but what's strange about it is that it's the kind of place you'd go, it seems to me, immediately after you'd won the nomination and you were launching your general election campaign in one of the principal battleground states that, that the Democrats need to win back. But before he can do any of that, he's got to win this primary. Mm -hmm. And Pennsylvania doesn't vote particularly early. You know, you got Iowa and New Hampshire and California and, and places like that. But I think that, you know, I guess Biden was trying to say, look, folks, I can beat Trump because I have street cred in the state of Pennsylvania and I've got labor backing and we need blue collar workers to back us to take these states back. But uh, it was a little unusual and it was a little old fashioned, wasn't it, Shannon? I mean, um, you know, labor unions don't have the membership they once had and they don't have the clout in politics they once had. So a labor union endorsement today, even a big one, uh, and the firefighters union, I guess, is fairly big, but it's not, you know, one of the biggest, is not as big a deal as it might once have been. And so there's that. So, you know, we'll have to see whether this is, this is smart, new, modern campaigning or whether this is, or whether this is a little archaic. Brett, I want to ask you about another controversy that uh, popped up this weekend, this editorial cartoon that was published a few days ago in the New York Times in some of the editions. Uh, there was what a lot of people thought the original statement was not a full apology. That was on Saturday. Then the fuller apology came on Sunday. We've got the cartoon there so people can make their own uh, decisions about what they think that represents. Um, Brett Stevens, who is an opinion columnist at The New York Times, himself said this. The Times wasn't explaining anti-Semitism. It was purveying it. For some readers, the Times has a long-standing Jewish problem dating back to World War II when it mostly buried news about the Holocaust and continuing into the present day in the form of intensely adversarial coverage of Israel. What do you make about where we are in this conversation, Brett? Well, uh, a couple of things. First of all, it's worth noting that that cartoon, the one that seemed to so many people to be so blatantly anti-Semitic, and which I think the Times is now pretty well acknowledged, was indeed anti-Semitic, was published in a fairly lightly read foreign edition of the paper and not in the one that, that hits the doorstops uh, all over the country, in, uh, the, 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 you know, the national edition of the New York Times. Um, I think what we have here is an ideological matter, and that is the Times and a lot of people on the left and a lot of people right for the times they may not be anti-semitic but they're kind of anti-israel and and there's that can stray into a very strong whiff of anti-semitism if editors and writers are not careful some editor somewhere and not to mention the cartoonist wasn't very careful with the one that was published over the weekend and that's what led to this. And it is quite unusual to see a time, one of the Times' own writers, in this mm -hmm. case, Brett Stevens, really writing a very tough piece about what a bad blunder it was. And I think that around the Times today, I'm sure there's a lot of recognition that it was indeed a bad blunder. And Britt, does it say anything to you that this wasn't included in all the editions? You mentioned specifically that it, it wasn't showing up on U.S. doorstops here, where people went out to get their paper, their version of the New York Times, and, and saw this. I mean, does that say anything to you about the selection of where it was published? Europe has had an anti-Semitic problem for as long as anybody can remember. And if you're, you know, seeking to appeal to a European audience where Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump are both unpopular, mm -hmm. you know, you might be sort of inclined to publish a cartoon like that. Mm -hmm. Bad mistake. Well, yeah, they've issued multiple apologies now. Britt Hume, always great to have you with us. Thank you so much.